we have the total resistance, we can make that single resistor that total resistance of the entire circuit. And it's going and that is going to be the it'll have the same stuff as with the normal circuit. So 2.67 ohms. And what we need to do is from here we find the current. So what the first um, equation that we're going to use for this is part of Ohm's law and it's that voltage is equal to the current again represented by an I and the times the resistance and so since we have the voltage and the resistance we can find the current by just dividing by the resistance so we end up with voltage over resistance is equal to I and 12 over 2.67, that's 12 volts, volts over 2.67 ohms is equal to the current. The answer we get from this is that the total current is, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit it into this box, 4.49 amps. Current is represented in amps, which is which is the symbol for that is just a big A. All right, and lastly, we also have this power column, and the equation for power. There's actually a bunch of them. If you look at your equation sheet, there's three different equations to get to power, but the one I'm going to be using is just P is equal to I V, and so 4.49 times 12. So we're just substituting in these values into this. The power we get is 53.88 watts. Power is going to be represented in watts, which is the unit for that is just a big W. Well, now that we have the voltages and we have the currents, what we can end up doing is find the individual voltage and currents in these resistors. What we're going to use are something called Kirchhoff's laws. And the thing that his laws are, it states that if a circuit is in series, then the current is the same. So the total current is equal to the current at point one is equal to the current at point two, etc. And the total voltage is equal to the voltage at 1 plus the voltage at 2. So the currents are all the same and the volt the total voltage is a summation of all of the other voltages. In a parallel circuit, it's kind of the opposite. The currents add up and the voltages are all the same. What we're going to do is basically just look backwards. We're going to backwards engineer these schematic diagrams that we've drawn where we're combining all of the resistances together. So first things first, the first uh, schematic diagram that we're going to look at is this one right here where all we have is a really simple parallel circuit. So based, on, uh, based off of uh, Kirchhoff's laws, since it's in parallel, we know that the voltages are equal and the currents add. Well, the voltage here is going to be the same as the voltage here. So in our little chart, since the 4 ohm resistor wasn't combined with anything else, we can just fill in its voltage value as 12, 12 volts because that's the total voltage of the circuit. And we know that for the eight, for an 8 ohm resistor, it would also have a voltage of 12. The only thing is, the way we got this 8 ohm resistor was by combining a 3 ohm resistor and a 5 ohm resistor. And these are in series with each other. So what we end up doing is we know the uh, total voltage and we know the resistance of the two of them put together. 
And since the currents are the same throughout both of these resistors, so since the current is the same here as it is, one second, is the same there as it is there, uh, what we need to do is find the current for this entire length because then using this equation we can find voltage values. So it's basically just going to revolve around this equation where if the two objects are in uh, parallel you're just going to know that the voltages are the same and when they're in series you're going to have to find the current if you have the voltage already. So what we're going to end up doing is say that we have the resistance which is 8 ohms and we have the voltage which is 12 volts so we've got we're going to end up having 12 divided by 8 because it's volts divided by resistance or the voltage divided by the resistance is equal to the current and we find that through both of these resistors they have a current of 1.5 amps. And we can actually fill that in right here because we know that the currents are going to um, be the same and we found it for these two resistors. We can't fill it in for here because we didn't actually find the, um, the current in here for the third resistor. But now that we have the current and we have the resistance for these two resistors, we can use the V equals IR equation to find the voltages. So 3 times 1.5 is 4.5, and 1.5 times 5 is 7.5. And a good way to check is if you have something like this where you have... Uh, two series resistors that are connected in parallel with another resistor. If you add up the voltages of the two uh, resistors that are in series, that should equal the voltage of the other one that was they were in parallel to. So to find the current for the third resistor, we're just going to have the voltage divided by the resistance to find the current. And so that is 3 amps. All right, and so lastly, we have power. And this is basically just something that you're going to want to fill out. It's mainly a method for checking and making sure that all your values are correct. Because if you multiply, if you use this equation with all of the values that you found, it should about equal the total power. Now there's going to be rounding errors and stuff like that but as long as you're close you can pretty much assume that you got the right answer. I'm not going to guarantee it but you can assume that you got the right answer. So we've got 1.5 times 4.5 and that leaves us with 6.75 then we've got 7.5 times 1.5 and that's 11.25. And lastly, we have 12 times 3, which is 36. And I'm just taking the voltages and the currents and multiplying them together. And if we add those together, what we're going to end up with is 54 watts. And that is really close. These values are really close to each other. They're only off by 0.12 watts. So we can assume that we got the right answer for this problem. So I'm going to be moving fast through these, but they all use basically the same idea. So if you didn't catch on this time, hopefully you'll catch on the next time. They do get more and more complex, but it's still just the basic ideas. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So now we're going to move on. All right, in problem number four, we're given this circuit in which we have a 3 ohm resistor in series with a uh, parallel part of the circuit with a 6 ohm resistor and a 2 ohm resistor. <clears throat> and we're told that the voltage drop is 12 volts. 
So if we have our VIRP chart, we've got one, two, three resistors. I'll label this as resistor one, resistor two, and resistor three. And we have the total. Well, for the resistances, we have three, three ohms, six ohms, and two ohms. And what we need to do is find the equivalent or the total resistance. Um, in here for the voltage, we can say that the total is 12. And in order to find the total or equivalent resistance, we're just going to do what we did in the last problem, which is basically condense this circuit down into uh, just one resistor. So we've got, we would basically take the 1 over 6 ohms plus the 1 over 2 ohms and that gives us 2 over 3 ohms or if you take the reciprocal of that what we end up with is 1 and a half ohms. So this whole, the, the entire parallel portion of the circuit could be represented as 1.5 ohms. So if we just redraw that, we've got 1.5 ohms and we have 3 ohms. So the equivalent resistance is the addition of those two. So it's 4.5 ohms. From here what we're going to have to do is find the total current for the entire circuit. So we've got Voltage is equal to current times the resistance. And once again, we just divide by resistance to get the current. And the current that we get for this whole circuit is 2.67 amps. From here, we're just going to basically say that in this, in this circuit that we had kind of created, uh, it has a current of 2.67 amps. And since it's in series, the current in this resistor and the current in this resistor are the same. Now one quick little reminder, uh, the 1.5 ohm resistor is not just that type of resistor. It's actually the parallel thing. So the total current, or the sum of the current in this part of the uh, circuit and this part of the circuit, are going to add up to 2.67. Whereas for this resistor, it's going to have the 2.67 current uh, as it's just normal current. So we can put that up here. All right, and to find the voltage, we just multiply uh, the current and the resistance. And so that gives us approximately 8 volts. And I'm going to actually put a line down here so you can tell the difference between those. In order to find the voltage and the current for the parallel part of the circuit, we are going to find the total voltage for that would be in this resistor because when it's in parallel, the voltage is the same on both legs of it. And what we're going to do now, well, could be done one of two different ways. The first way, which is the way that I'm going to show you, is we know that the total voltage is 12 and we found that the voltage in series in part of the series is 8. So the voltage through the other part of the series or this 1.5 ohm resistor is going to be the total voltage or 12 volts minus the 8 volts that are taken up in the 3 ohm resistor. So what we're left with is 4 volts going through the parallel circuit and since the voltage is the same on both legs in a parallel circuit we can fill in that for each of those and then find out that the current for this is 0.67 by dividing 4 by 6 and we find out that the voltage in here is 2 by dividing 4 by 3. The other way you could do this is by taking the current and when you take the current and you uh, put that into and you multiply that by the resistance of here or the uh, equivalent resistance for that parallel circuit you're going to end up with the same voltage.
you're going to end up with the four volts that